it's time once again for another episode of Atlanta Legal Experts Radio, broadcasting live from the Pro Business Channel studios in Atlanta. And now here's your host, Emily Rowell. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. I am Emily Rowell with Peachtree Offices. This morning I have Rich Casanova here with me. Good morning, Rich. Uh, good morning, Emily. I have Craig Williams with me. Great morning. Great morning. Yes, wonderful w- morning. And I have Bonnie Buell Russick. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> good morning to you, too. And we have a special episode this morning. We're actually talking about ser- the service industry of the legal field. And so we're going to talk about how we can help attorneys market their practice today. So we're going to have some really great tips. So please stay tuned. Um, we have our sponsors this morning, which is Peachtree Offices, as always, helping attorneys establish their firm in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And we also have 3A Law Practice Management, helping attorneys start and grow grow their practice. And we have Atlanta's own John Marshall Law School. So thank you so much for tuning in on AtlantaLegalExperts.com. And welcome to another great show. Yeah. Beautiful weather. Yeah. It's brisk. <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> we got winter. I'm looking, f- I'm waiting for the snowflakes. I have been promised snowflakes. I saw some in my headlights this morning. Did you really? Mm. Yeah. I didn't see any yet. Yeah. It made my son excited. And then he said, well... It's not going to stick, so I have to stay in school. So Exactly. Yeah. I was like, it's too bad, isn't it? So go ahead. Go ahead. Go on. Move on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we are highlighting Miss Russick this morning. Um, she has a long career in helping attorneys. Uh, she is president of BBR Marketing. Since the firm's inception in 2009, Bonnie has led the young company to become widely recognized and respected within the professional services marketing niche with award-winning client websites and clients in 25 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. Bonnie quite literally wrote the book on online marketing for accounting firms, Take Your Marketing Online, Proven Ways to Grow Your Firm in the Digital Age at the Request of the AICPA. She was named one of the most powerful women in accounting for 2015 by CPA Practice Advisor and was recognized for two years in a row as one of accounting's today's top 100 most influential people. She is a founding member of Atlanta Independent Women's Network and is the Atlanta Chapter President of the Association for Accounting Marketing. She is also a regular contributor to a variety of websites, including Social Media Today, Accounting Today, and other industry-related publications, and has been quoted in Entrepreneur, U.S. News, and World Report, CPA Practice Advisor, and others, and has been a guest on Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. You even have your own show. Yes, she does. I do. I just started one in um, January of this year called Atlanta's Most Trusted Advisors on Business Radio X. So That's fantastic. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So, and we're focusing on how you help attorneys today. But let me back up a little bit and ask, how did you get into this? world that you're in now i i get asked that a lot actually people are <laughs> like you started a company and you chose to work with attorneys and accountants <laughs> and i'm like yes actually i did <laughs> um i before starting my company mm-hmm. i had about my uh 20 ish years of marketing experience mm-hmm. um and prior uh, immediately prior to that i was the first marketing director for a mid-size accounting firm here in atlanta and, you know, was involved in Legal Marketing Association as well as the um, AIM, the Association of Accounting Marketing. And what I discovered working inside of a firm was that it was really hard to find marketing professionals that understood the challenges and uniqueness of marketing professional services. You know, you think about it, it's very different than, say, trying to market a, a pen or a water, mm-hmm. bottle of water um, or even other services like, mm-hmm. you know, dry cleaning or nail services. You're, you're basically selling something that it tends to be extremely complicated, mm-hmm. require a large amount of knowledge, and usually it's very expensive, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? So you're talking about a huge level of trust needed there. Right. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. So if you, but if you go to market saying, hey, trust me. The last thing anybody's ever going to do is trust, trust you, you because yeah. you sound sleazy car salesman guy. So right, right. Um, it really is kind of a different market. So um, I decided to kind of uh, 
leave the internal firm that I was working, internal job at the firm I was working for, and um, start my own back in 2009. So, and that was right after the crash. I so know that was a hard time to do something. She's like a risk that. taker there. It yeah. was um, <laughs> pioneer. It was a crazy. I, I was called brave and crazy on equal amounts at the time. Now what are they um, calling? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at me now, yeah. uh, Madam President. Um, right. There you go, <laughs> first lady. Uh, well, part of it was too. Um, it, it, it did actually work in my favor because when I started out, it was just me, and mm, I was sure. a consultant, and I came to the table with a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. But I was able to help firms at a lesser rate than, say, some of the larger firms that are out there. Hmm. So, um, in some ways, I so think you had your own little niche, yeah, yeah. my own little yeah. niche. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I was able to um, kind of, in some ways, take advantage of the the market being at a at a low point, and then just kind of rode the wave as it as it came back up. Fantastic. And I bet you it was, did you hire early on? Because I'm thinking people probably had, were looking for jobs at that point. Or were you able to just pretty much take it yourself to start? Because basically it's just all you. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, to start, I was, I gave it six months. I was like, okay, I'm going to try this wow. out. And um, I was, it w- w- as a family, we took an enormous pay cut for me to be able to do this. So I do have to give sure. my husband a shout out to being supportive and saying, all right, I love ramen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, and, you know, at six months time, we hadn't lost the house um, or anything right. like that. And things were kind of starting to pick up. It was probably about a year in when I hired my first person part time. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and I, I don't know what good vibes I've put out in the universe, but I, we're now six people and every single person that works with me has kind of fallen in my lap at exactly mm. the right time. I love that. Um, four of us have worked together at the accounting firm where I was the marketing director in a variety of different roles. Mm-hmm. But I love the fact that these are people that I've worked with before. I'm I know sure they have the experience. They have the experience. Um, they may not even have marketing experience, but they they know the industry. And, you know, I can if I've got somebody with the right kind of attitude I can teach them a lot of the marketing side of things Mm -hmm. Um, and you know the other two people just kind of showed up when they're supposed to so I actually am a little fearful of the moment when I have to do the whole list of job and look at resumes and interview people because I believe it or not at the company of six people I haven't had to do that yet wow wow that's wonderful sounds like you're very successful now and obviously you are you've been in business now since 2009 but the first thing you mentioned was that you found a way for these different industries that are different from your normal to market online. So what are the challenges that they face these firm, these attorney firms and CPA firms face that the other industries may not? I think, um, communicating very clearly what it is that they do is one of the biggest challenges. Um, attorneys tend to be very good writers, but they're very good legal writers they are not good at copywriters you know, for copywriters or website yeah, yeah, writers definitely, and definitely. you know communicate boiling it down to just you know a few choice words of mm-hmm. this is what we do um, the other big thing that we preach constantly is um, that they they no, don't know how to differentiate themselves from all the other attorneys mm-hmm. out there and you know that's you you go to you know five person law firm websites all over the country and most of them are written in a way and designed in a way that you could just change out the logos and the names Most definitely. and it sounds like the same, the firm. same guy. Yeah. Or uh, girl. Same. Yeah. yeah. Team, whatever. And, you know, trying to differentiate them as a firm, not just based on what the services they provide, but you know, some of that couldn't just be personality as well. Mm-hmm. One of um, the, one of the challenging things I think in some ways that we do is we do do a lot of websites and help, um, put together part of that is putting together profiles and the bios on these attorneys mm-hmm. and most of the time they read you know so and so has these 
qualifications and went to the school and is a member of this bar association. Resume like. Right. And we're like, who are you as a person? There People you go. are intimidated by attorneys, you know. Yes. And particularly, you know, if you're talking about family law or some some sort of situation where you're you're really in a kind of a desperate position in a sad mm-hmm. spot, mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I want to know who this person is that I'm putting all this trust into. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, uh, silly things like you know you coach little league. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. like to know that. Yeah, a yeah you're a human. Yeah. 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 Some sort of connection. Sure. So. Um, sometimes one of the biggest challenges we have is like pulling that out of the attorneys because they're like, no, I'm a very serious business person and I'm an attorney. And I'm like, yeah, but you're also a person. Yeah. Right. And, you know, w- what did you do on the weekends? You know, do you prefer pirates or ninjas? <laughs> I mean, it's a stupid question, but it kind of sometimes starts like breaking that ice a little bit and they'll start I sharing. I love that. Yeah. You show the personality. And I, that's why I love this show. I always have the technical questions, but in the very beginning, I always ask, how did you get into this? Yeah, What's your story. history? What's your story? Mm-hmm. And most often, more often than not, they actually fall into it and love it. Yeah. And absolutely love that they're helping people. Yeah. yeah. That's actually one of the questions we ask quite frequently is, yeah. you know, how did you get into this and why did you stay? Mm-hmm. You know, why? Yeah. what makes you get up in the morning? Right. Bit. There's not as many as, like the generational attorneys as you would think, you know, where they just know they're going to law school because their dad was in law school, their granddad was in law school and... So on and so forth. Yeah. So these firms that you work with, um, some of the cutting edge firms that are out there, what are they doing differently? Um, a lot of, a lot of different things actually. Um, we won't give it all away. We won't give it all away. No, no, no. Um, (laughs) I, I think websites, I mean, I don't want to spend the whole time talking about websites necessarily, but, um, it seems like with Google's decision back this past April to give preference to responsive design sites, which basically means those that kind of automatically adjust for your phone and your iPad mm-hmm. and the computer. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to do all this pinching and right. um, adjusting to see what's on the page. Um, a lot of firms have realized that their 10 year old website needs to be updated mm-hmm. sure. and, so they're making them more um, you know, user accessible, friendly. user friendly. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing a lot more um, firms on social media mm-hmm. and trying to kind of use that medium in a way um, to I- increase the exposure of the firm. And also it's a good way to show some personality as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, on these websites, we're starting to see more and more blogging. Uh, which is often a challenge. Um, I can, I, I'm sure you've heard the stories of you know firms that are like, we're going to do a blog, and then like two months later, they're like, what are we going to talk about? You know, <laughs> yeah. um, which is why we added ghostwriting to our list of services, mm-hmm. and we do quite a bit of that for um, firms as well. But you know, I think trying to be um, as interactive as possible because you know so much marketing has gone to being, you know, two-way marketing as mm-hmm. opposed to just pushing your message out there constantly. Sure. More uh, of a relationship builder. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's all about resonating. You, we you talked about earlier um, knowing a little bit more about the person and trusting. Uh, but that, that know, like, and trust is always going to be why we do a transaction. And mm-hmm. when you talk about spending as much money as you tend to spend with an attorney, there's a lot more consideration that you need to have. And, and, and that's across the board. Uh, what resonates with human beings is the human engagement of the story. And there, um, I'm, I'm, that's what I, we focus on as well, uh, getting that story out, you know, um, telling the relativity of that person with that customer that they're interested in provoking to come spend their money or spend their time and trust with them. So it's, mm-hmm. it's very important that uh, uh, that story, and, and whether, you, whether you use a blog or you, you have testimonials, that's something that tells about that personality or that engagement, mm-hmm. which gives people the confidence that they, hey, I want to, I want to do business. I want to do business, and I want to share this person with yeah. other people that I run yeah. into as well. Because uh, those times, you, especially when you're dealing with an attorney, it's not it's a pos- it's not a positive one for the most part. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, so you need all the positive that you can get and, and connection uh, that you can get. I love that. Yeah. And you make a good point too. And something that we try to encourage as well is you're talking about testimonials and case studies. You know, anytime you can 
share information by telling a story as opposed to just sharing facts. Mm-hmm. Um, it tends to be so much more effective. And personal. Yeah. It's personal. Yeah. And, and, I mean, like you said earlier, it's a person. I had a question about um, the, the passion behind I heard you say help earlier. You like helping people. And whether it's attorneys or marketers, uh, I, I think what I've found in businesses that surge or grow and sustain and they get the the um, the opportunity to have that attraction of people because people really see an intention or, you know, there's something that's you're not just chasing money. Mm-hmm. And that's what mm-hmm. attracted people to you to help you with that vision mm-hmm. to help to genuinely help people uh, where they're needing the help. So uh, that was exciting to hear that. Because uh, we've we've heard that with attorneys, mm-hmm. like you said, there's not too many of the generational attorneys. They're more of that organic thing. They they were studying this, and then they saw a need over there, and they wanted to help people with that. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's exciting to hear uh, confirmation again that you know being a servant leader mm-hmm. uh, is rewarding. Oh, I I'm a huge believer in that, and I, I'll tell you when I first started the company. I mean, I started with nothing, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so you weren't doing it for the money. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, no, she, I, I were, but well, she, yeah, she needed to I do it for the money. Yeah, yeah but, but um, but but to build on that point, um, one of the things that I did, and I always encourage, I talk to a lot of new business owners who are like, "How'd you do it?" Um, is I would make at least three one-on-one appointments a week, mm. and would sit down with people, and it could be potential clients it could be others in the industry it could just be somebody that i respected and rather than sit down and tell them this is what i'm doing i I sat down and asked what advice do you have for me you know what you know you've built a successful business what you or you know the industry or here's what i'm thinking about doing give me your feedback on it and you know it it was genuine yeah of course i'm looking to try and get introductions to uh, to others that could lead to business but I'll tell you the advice that I got in those meetings and the introductions that um, I got. People, I think, in general, do want to help. Yeah, people want to be a part of success, whether it's theirs or someone else's. Yes, yeah. and signif- significance, especially mm-hmm. the millennials. I mean, they oh, yeah. they figure out how to make money. I mean, it's all types of way to make money, but they want to be significant, and that mm-hmm. gradual significance that we are able to contribute is very important to our. To our being. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. And it's interesting in the industry, um, particularly, I would say, law and accounting, there's huge talk about um, kind of firms in transition and secession planning because you have a lot of partners who have been there a long time and have kind of lived under this old model. And they they look at the millennials and they're like, they're just not the leaders that they need to be. <laughs> and it's like, no, they're, they have amazing potential to be leaders. One, you need to train them on you know certain things on how to go out and get business but in reality the whole the the firm of the future is going to look different than it does Most today definitely. and building on the strengths of the millennials is i think is going to make some really powerful firms out there with that being said I just want to pause a moment and say that you're listening to Atlanta Legal Expert Radio I'm your host Emily Rowell with Peachtree Offices we have 3A Law Practice Management and John's Atlanta's own John Marshall Law School. Outstanding. <laughs> As our sponsors, and we're listening to Bonnie Russick this morning, highlighting her and how she helps a law firms. Um, gosh, where are you located? Everywhere. All around Atlanta. In the oh, country. Yeah. <laughs> she's, all over the country. She's everywhere. Yeah. We, we, uh, we do actually, um, we surpassed the, um, we have clients in over 25 states now and a couple of Canadian provinces. Congratulations. So, yeah. yeah, it's been, it's amazing in part because, and I think this goes to law firms too, is, you know, because of the fact that we've been able to have a very narrow niche, we only work with professional services firms, mm-hmm. we've been able to kind of create a national reputation because there's very few firms out there that have that narrow of a focus mm-hmm. so it's it's been you know one of the things that we advise our clients on too is you know the more narrow a lot of times you can focus th- the smaller your audience but the more of it you're going to get yeah i love that that's so true you got to specialize in something you do that really well mm-hmm. a mile Instead deep and an inch everything. wide in a sense yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah tell me about your book my book, um, yeah, I had um, never, well, I'd, like everybody, you're like, I want to write a book one day. Um, but the, uh, like say, we work with attorneys and accountants, and the uh, AICPA, which is the American Institute of CPAs, that kind of mm-hmm. all of them are a member of, basically, yeah. 
um, approached me in about writing a marketing focused book, particularly um, online marketing. Mm -hmm. So um, I spent a lot of the 2014 and early 2015 working on that, and it came out in May. Mm. Fantastic. Um, and that uh, really has been promoted by the AICPA and various others. But um, the exciting thing is <laughs> I actually got my first um, – check on it uh last week so wow. we, we've we've covered expenses so <laughs> good, actually, good, good. i never really thought i would make much money on it but um it's it's kind of uh, getting the message out there and it's a, it's a phenomenal marketing tool in a way to kind of expose our firm to a lot of people that may not have been exposed to it other ways it also What's shows credibility name? and authority too yeah yeah what is the name of the book take your marketing online hmm. oh yeah, very simple. Pretty easy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, how can we find the book? You can find it on Amazon, um, actually, or um, you can buy it through the AICPA. If you're a mem it, for those that may be a member of the AICPA, there's a discount involved. Mm. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, why would you give away all of your secrets in the book? Um, you know, <laughs> I actually learned a lot from um, a PR professional many, many years ago, and um, he did a very similar thing in that he wrote a book called um, Full Frontal um, PR mm. and was uh, it, uh, and his advice was well, I asked him the same question you just asked me and he said here's the thing there will be those that take the book and and do uh, follow the guidelines the and you know do it themselves um, but the majority of people, what happens is you read it and you're like, there's a lot more to this than I realized. Mm. This is a lot more complicated. And you know what? I'm an attorney. I'm not a marketer. Right. So it, what it does is it actually in some ways Helps. explains what it is that we do and that there is a lot of complexity to it and strategy mm -hmm. to it. And, you know, frankly, we've had a couple of people that called us and said, I read your book. And I'm doing this on my own, but you know what? I really need your help here. Mm. So sure. it's it's sure. it's led to business and that's fantastic. A lead generator. I could see how that works too, in a sense that you know when you share a lot and there's a lot to share, the dependency, like you said, you want them to stay in their lane and do what they're world class at. Mm -hmm. and, and once then they you realize, do what you are good at. exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's more of a compliment, and they see the value. You're also sharing the value. Yeah, it's a it's important to share. And you talked about that earlier, you know, as be, being intimate to, uh, as far as sharing uh, your story, uh, sharing, per se, your secrets. It's still not showing how you implement your secrets all the time. Right. You know, you're just saying, hey, here's this the secret. This is what we do. Yeah, this is what we do. This, and, and, and sometimes you can get into the how, and that makes it that much more overwhelming for them to even, uh, yeah, I need somebody to do that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So what they want to do win -win. is what they do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and when I, I, I don't do my own taxes. I don't <laughs> sure. file Pull your do own my own chief. legal team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm like, no, that's why I hire other people. And, yeah. and, and another argument that works really well with both uh, most professional services providers is our hourly fee is less than yours. So there basically, you if you're spending three hours writing a blog post and you can pay us to do one in an hour and a half, why are you not doing exactly. that? Good. I mean, it makes financial sense. Yeah. That's smart. That's now smart. tell me, everybody's listening. They're going to get out their pens right now. And what are the top three things firms should look at when they want to ramp up their marketing? I'm going to go back to what I said before and say, I think your website is the number one thing. Mm. I, all of us. If you're not, if you don't have a happening website, you're done. Yeah. In I this agree. World today. And I actually have this argument a lot of times with attorneys who are like, nobody hires an attorney off the web. I'm like, well, one. Actually, they haven't hired you. Uh, they haven't hired you off the web. <laughs> um, and yeah, because of your website. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. It's it's like the self perpetuating thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, definitely, you need to have a website, and hopefully, one that it does provide op opportunity for people to be interactive mm -hmm. and to you know s catch a glimpse of the personality of the people that work at your firm, including not just the attorneys but the paralegals and the. A lot of times, people are interacting with you know those that level of person at the at the firm, and they are selling you more so than the attorneys in some cases. Um, I think the second one is to, you know, make sure that um, think about your social media presence. Um, I would say if you're not as a business owner of any sort, if you're not on LinkedIn, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Yeah. 
um, mm. we we don't necessarily say you should be on all the sites. You sure. Know, think about where your uh, clients Market are going to mm-hmm. be yeah. or where those that may be in a position to refer you are going to be. Mm. That may be Facebook. I mean, as, as much as Facebook gets uh, maligned, um, you know, we all have friends and family who have needs for legal services. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's not always a bad place to be. Um, and I think those two, before you continue, mm-hmm. are the most important because attorneys receive 25% of their business from other attorneys. So I would say that LinkedIn and Facebook would definitely be the top two to be on mm-hmm. and to keep it updated, too. That's another thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I often see a guest coming on and I look them up on on LinkedIn and there's no bio. There's no nothing on there. And there's an old picture and I see him. I don't even recognize him because <laughs> the picture is totally different. So keep it updated. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's so important. And I'm helping Bonnie with her. No, I love it. <laughs> hey, see, we're, we're, we're preaching to choirs here. <laughs> synergy. <laughs> she attracts synergy. That's what she does. Yes, yes. Um, and and, the and I would thing? say maybe the third thing would be a tie between um, trying to write articles that, you know, not only on your own website, but see if there's opportunities to put those in other publications, to yeah. pitch them, um, to really kind of get uh, provide, you know, give away some secrets, mm-hmm. tell some stories, do that in a way that uh, through other media is going to give you an added level of legitimacy. And it's also going to immediately peg you as an expert. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're in a publication, if you got an article in the Atlanta Business Chronicle, um, people automatically assume you know what you're talking about, even if you don't. Yeah. So yeah. if you're on Perception Atlanta is reality. Experts Radio, of or course, there, most definitely, that would be a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and they usually come with like you know five tips on what to do if you get pulled over and you're suspected of drinking, you know, or five tips to do this, or you know, just simple things for people to follow. You can put that on any kind of media. You can put it on a CD. And send it out to your clients, and then transcribe it. YouTube, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. So it's it's very simple, but yeah. it does take time. It does, and so that's why we hire you. <laughs> Most definitely, BBR. That's folks, why we BBR. have a business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think has been the biggest secret to your success? We've been talking about, you know, you're you're wanting to help people and everything, but what is your what do you think yours is? I think part of it is I I actually love what I do. And um, enjoy working with my clients, and and we we kind of have a pretty solid no jerk policy, mm. and um, we have actually turned down business from people that we just didn't feel like were a good match for our somewhat irreverent and a little bit snarky personality <laughs> at times. <laughs> um, and I have amazing people that work with me. And like I say, they've fallen in my lap and been just uh, it, absolutely incredible to you the have, company. When I looked on LinkedIn, I was sold already. She has so much, so many people that are talking for her, you know, mm-hmm. endorsing her. And oh my gosh, her resume just blew me away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we require when we have a service industry come on the show, they have to give me three references. And I was like, you don't even have to, but just because it's a policy, will you do that, please? And I knew it would be no problem for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, her history is amazing, and that's why I wanted. She's top notch, oh. and that's why I wanted her on this show. Well, thank I get, you. It, it resonates. I mean, uh, it's the the power of the share. It's the power of your passion, and that's what propels you to help others. And who doesn't want to be helped? Even those who are afraid to ask for that help. Mm-hmm. And it seems so that you make it easy for them to, you know, welcome that help that you have. Oh. I, th- I think that's powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, powerful. And, uh, you know, w- like you say, I mean, well, frankly, I made more money when I was working for <laughs> a firm than I do now. But, sure. you know, it's it's I'm doing something that but I love. But you're more, yeah. Satisfied. You're more yeah. satisfied. Oh, and yeah. I'm doing it with people that I that I want to work with. It's it's amazing. I feel like I'm incredibly lucky. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we work with attorneys and we love attorneys. We always say we love attorneys and attorneys look at us and go. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're bu- they buy their own s- the the jokes and the self esteem, and it's like, no, really, you guys are pretty okay most yeah. of the time. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, we have our moments, but you know, <laughs> know. we all do. You know. <laughs> so you're all uh, you better be all over social media and your website. Can you tell us everywhere that you're? Yes, All your um, links. the website is bbrmarketing.com. Um, we are on Twitter as bbrmarketing, um, Facebook 
Um, you can search for us the same way. We are LinkedIn. You can um, search for me as Bonnie Buell Resick or BBR Marketing there as well. Um, we are on Google Plus. Um, we're one of the few holdouts there. Um, but and you know, just Google search BBR Marketing, and we show up in a whole lot of places. Outstanding. Yeah, that was great. A lot of little tips for attorneys, little teasers to get them started. And um, you can look up Bonnie and find out more. Most definitely. Yeah. And I love the color scheme, the green. Thank you. Subliminally, yeah. it's um, going to cost you. <laughs> As it should. <laughs> but it's worth it. Green and silver. Most mm. definitely. There you go. Invest in Bonnie. Because <laughs> she will invest in you. Hey, I like this. <laughs> we could keep going, you know. We could go on for another half an hour. <laughs> thank you so much for being here this morning. We really thoroughly enjoyed you. And thank you to our listeners. This is Emily Rowell with Atlanta Legal Experts Radio and Peachtree offices. You can see us and tune in next week on AtlantaLegalExpertsRadio.com. Thank you again for joining Emily Rowell and her guests on the Pro Business Channel. Use the social media links here to share today's show and stay tuned for the next episode of Atlanta Legal Experts Radio.